So, hello. Nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, <coughs> so, I'm going to be talking about um, the medial of cocaine plant system. And um, just now we've been hearing about outcomes. I'd just like to point out that the child yesterday who gave the inauguration, the, the prayer, it was a medial implant. So, um, <coughs> the headquarters is uh, in um, Innsbruck, Austria. And uh, we have now 100% uh, uh, <coughs> subsidiary uh, in uh, Delhi. Uh, which is right next to the Lotus Temple. Uh, I think very much more information about Medel, please visit uh, medel.com on the website. So which products does, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Which products uh, does uh, Medel offer in India? Um, <coughs> so we have the Maestro CI system. Uh, we have the two implants here. Um, we have the Pulsa. Uh, ceramic casing and uh, the Sonata titanium casing. We have uh, the Opus 2 processor and uh, the Tempo Plus processor. Uh, we have uh, recently brought out a <coughs> rechargeable battery pack for the BT processor, so it looks like that. And we also have the software called Maestro. Uh, apart from the copy implants, we also have uh, this combined uh, cochlear implant with hearing aid. So in the low frequencies, um, <coughs> you have a hearing aid, and in the high frequencies, uh, the cochlear implant. Uh, this is the world's uh, first uh, processor with a combined cochlear implant processor and a hearing aid. We also have uh, a middle ear implant, the Viking Sound Bridge for sensorineural and mixed hearing losses. Um, this is the FMT uh, with a very small and lightweight um, device attached to the long process of Incus with a titanium clip. Or more recently, it's been indicated uh, for uh, to be placed on the round in the niche uh, for mixed hearing loss. This of course is greatly enlarged, it's actually very small. Uh, basically, if uh, hearing aids cannot help a hard of hearing person, there's a good possibility that uh, Medel can help you uh, with your patients with one of our hearing implant systems. We have many established clinics in India um, <coughs> uh, who are using our device. So there's the list. So, um, <coughs> what can you get from the Maestro system? Um, High performance, flexible technology. Uh, the very slim, the most uh, lightweight speech processor on the market. The module is designed with interchangeable wearing options. So, from wearing a young child to an elderly person to an active person, there are all kinds of wearing options. We have a long air, air cell battery life, 3.5 days. So, it's very battery, and it's very uh, energy efficient, our system. And of course, now we have the rechargeable BTE battery pack. Yes, and also MRI safe without magnets. Uh, uh, removal. For surgeons, a choice of two housing designs, ceramic or titanium. Uh, small footprint service, uh, numerous electrode options for uh, each cochlea, and automatic the longest electrode for uh, complete cochlear coverage. For audiologists, a flexible CI platform, quick and easy fitting, enhanced telemetry features. So uh, good outcomes are achievable with metal implants, provided everything is done correctly. And um, uh, this is uh, results from the Wurzel Clinic with a pulsar implant. Uh, Monosyllable testing in quiet, um, up to 12 months, uh, up to 63%. And the census is in quiet, uh, 89% correct, up to 12 months after the first fitting. So this just shows your uh, implant uh, generation. We also offer the C40, and uh, Sonata will be released uh, sometime next year. Uh, we offer good value for money. Um, 
So the C40 plus was uh, 5.3 lakhs, and the pulse implant 8.9. You get a BT processor, no 41, and uh, uh, so a variety of battery packs. Okay. Um, so you have uh, a very thin implant for and users for IVO for young children. And uh, this is uh, Sonata, it's reinforced titanium housing, smallest and lightest implant on the market. Uh, it's MRI safe, um, up to uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 1 Tesla and 1.5 Tesla. And uh, we have a very fast uh, pulse rate, 50,700 pulses per second. Also, there's a safety device that um, if you have bilateral implants, uh, you can't mix up uh, the processors uh, because it uh, only works one processor with one implant. And um, we have uh, using monopolar stimulation with 24 optimized individual current sources and the 12 independent channels. Uh, for Meriel, it's very important uh, that we have uh, our electrodes uh, are the longest on the market, and we uh, go right to the very edible tip of the uh, <coughs> off here. You can see here the electrode tip. Here. So, okay, we have extensive cochlear, cochlear coverage, wide contact spacing to uh, reduce channel interaction, and uh, the better matching of the natural Solativity of the of the cochlea. Whole wide range of uh, electro variants for the surgeon, from standard, medium, compressed, split, flexible, uh, sort of automatic electrodes, and also um, uh, here today has a processing capability which multiplies abilities of the implant to mul to multiply by two. Better processing capabilities, better memory capabilities. I've already told you about the advantage of how low power consumption in the implant and now coming to the number of programs. We have four programs available, two regular programs, two for auxiliary inputs. It has a separate sensitivity control. It has dual microphone. It has directional microphone advantage for children who wish to you know hear better, understand their teacher better in a classroom. You have a, the microphone with beam forming advantage. Of course, it gives the children immediately a beat or a light on low battery so that the child or the teacher knows that the battery is going off, the child needs a new battery. So you will see all through in this solutions, solutions and solutions for the patient. It has a direct connectivity with FM systems or with induction coils and cables are audio input cables so that the child can connect his speech processor directly to the television, CD, iPod, etc. So again, empowering the patient to hear, uh, to, to hear better, to feel better. Now this speech processor, which I am showing you now on the screen, is less than 2 grams in weight, specially designed with a with a remote battery pack, we are using a new strategy called the fast Fourier transform, which is very effective. All kinds of objective tools are available for intraoperative tests, etc., including EABR, impedance measurement, integrity tests, etc. Very friendly system for mapping, which you can see in the afternoon session. We have multi array implants also. We have binaural implants, very innovative again, as I told you. This new binaural implant has the facility uh, wherein both the cochleas can be inserted. You can have a binaural implant with one, uh, with the cost of one. You can see here on the screen, if anybody is interested, I can show them again because the time is running out. This is one implant with two electrodes, one going to the right here, other going to the left here. We also have brainstem implants. I won't delve into that right now. Conclusion, we are talking of solutions to the patient, we are talking of empowering the patient. It is the safest implant available today, easy for all of you, easy for the patient, easy for the surgeon, easy for the audiologist and the teachers of the hearing impaired. 
improved reliability of the implant, very innovative, you have seen what all it offers, and empowering the patient. So the buzzwords are reliability, and I just want to show you, for the surgeons first, a very small film, I still have a, a one and a half minutes to go, just watch carefully, if you can just put the light on. How, with a small incision, how easily, just, just like a pocket, you're just inserting the implant here, no bed drilling required at all. 35 minutes total skin to skin surgery, very, very simple, easy, safe, that's the way. Seeing this this is good and noted. Go to another one, and then <laughs> just with the screw, with the screwdriver, two screws which are self-tapping screws. You can see that happening here. Very easy, very simple again, and the outcome. Finally, the children are doing well. We got about 30 kids now. Uh, well, this is a boy called Mokshit who was operated here in Bombay and is doing wonderfully well in hardly less than three months. Yes, my time is up. Uh, just a film. The parents are very happy, which is, I think, the final requirement. This is the mother giving a short discussion of what, how she feels about it. With your permission. You know, uh, let me first of all share with you, uh, US FDA, what he is referring to is US FDA for American, yeah, uh, US US doing a surgery in America. Uh, we have the CE mark because currently these implants are being operated. What is, what is CE? CE is the European certification which is more difficult to get. I give you a small example, Alps hearing aids of India is now US FDA approved as hearing aids but we still don't have a CE mark. The other CE mark is more difficult to get and now we are shortly going to get that. So what I am saying is, here we already have a CE mark. This implant is being used all over Europe. In India, there are certain sitting here, you, you are using Vertin. Now Vertin doesn't have a US FDA mark, but it is being used all over and giving excellent results. I am sure all of you are users of that. Uh, so the CE mark is very good, good enough. Surgeons all over Europe are using. We have a reliability report published, which you can take a copy of, and uh, the European um, um, authorities have ratified that. Okay, uh, there were three questions to the same effect. So, <laughs> and the last one which you already answered is MXM FDA approved, and uh, what is the CSR data which you just? Uh, okay, fine. Then uh, Raki. We do not know the life of the implant beyond 30 years. They might need a re-implant. Will re-implant not be a problem with a contour electrode array? I don't think you can answer that, but... Um, yes, we are basing uh, about re-implantation. Clinically, we have evidence for first 30 years. So even if parents ask questions like how long will this implant last, we tell them that experience has told us that up to 30 years is fine. Now with only time we will know they are designed to last for a long uh, lifetime. 
Now coming to contour, contour advance doesn't matter because we have had, uh, uh, Sir also has had experience where uh, re-implant was not an issue at all, so we shouldn't be a concern. We have had re-implantation of uh, two implants, I think I can get the data here. I have had to replace one nucleus and one medial, both were replaced three years after uh, implantation. That means for three years they worked very well, that for some reason uh, they stopped working. They have a test which shows that it's a heart failure. And I think the approximate uh, data available in the world literature is anything between the work work. Three to four per thousand, or what's the data for heart? Yes, training? now for freedom, we are finding that the reliability is almost uh, close to 100%, the survival rate, whereas for uh, the M, the 24M, which is the straight array, it's 3%, uh, I would say out of 100. 3 out of 100, that's quite high. Anything you would like to add to that about uh, heart failures? Yes. Now that what I'm saying is sorry, what I'm saying is over years. So 24M has been there. What we're talking about here, wouldn't the implant is working fine, everything okay, and then for some unexplained reason, we're not talking about injury, trauma, nothing like that. The internal component, the outer part is different, but the internal component <coughs> suddenly stops working. So comment to this is uh, we have a CSR of like 99.9 percent .9 at one year. And uh, what I believe is the inclusion criteria for what you call a failure. I mean, advanced biomics never makes a distinction between so-called hard failures and soft failures. Um, it, that means that when and some electrodes start dropping off the map, and you need to turn them off, which results in a drop in clinical performance. So that also you would take as failure? Yes, even though the device would confirm on our software that it is functioning as per specification and stimulating the device. But, but patient performance has dropped, we would yet count it as a device failure and include it in our reliability. <laughs> as a failure. Okay, now for advanced finding, since you've got the mic with you, uh, does the waterproofing make such a difference <coughs> when any, I don't know if you can read it, what makes? Then uh, something one, one anyway, we will ask this question, well, first question, there are four, five questions in this. Does the waterproofing make a difference? Then bionics, backup in Delhi, what is available? Then uh, what is this? Guarantee. Guarantee period and replacement uh, policy. What is the second question? Any something leaks? Any silicone leaks huh? which you've uh, had in the past? Okay. Achha, okay, fine. The uh, when you have to withdraw the implant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, I'll just answer them stepwise. Uh, the first one is: Does waterproofing make a difference? I think uh, in our scenarios, you have patients living in Mumbai, Calcutta, Kerala, Chennai. It's very humid. With BT processors, uh, patients tend to sweat. Many South Indian uh, patients use oil on the hair. So definitely, when you're talking of a sensitive speech processor, I think water, we won't call it waterproofing. Please, be answer, we call it water resistant because uh, I don't think anybody would say we have waterproof processors, so as to say. So definitely, it does play a role in uh, because it is an expensive piece of equipment and uh, we also cover the moisture related uh, damage if ever it occurs under warranty. So I think it does play an important role. Uh, the second is about your question about um, the issue that we had in 2006 that was about a hermetic uh, a problem with the feed through. That was where the, uh, the feed through happens to be the triangular area where the uh, electrodes actually exit from the electronics and pass on into the array. So in fact, that is all part of our uh, reliability report which I have copies of which you can take away wherein we definitely show that there was an issue in uh, the hermetic sealing of that feed through wherein there was some moisture leaking in and causing failures. So what we have done post-2005 is we have introduced uh, certain modifications in manufacturing wherein we yet continue to destroy 17% uh, of all our devices which is one in every six device. So over since then we have destroyed over 1500 devices um, and subjected them to see whether the testing that uh, the, the manufacturing modalities that we have in implemented are effective or not. And we see that now the moisture levels within the electronics that are well below what FDA allows them to be. It is less than a tenth of what FDA allows them to be. So this problem is now completely behind us. And uh, that was the time that we introduced, like we call it a partial recall, because it was a problem from one particular company that was making the feed through for us. So that isn't there any longer. 
uh, back up in Delhi, uh, like I said, maybe I just rushed to that slide. We do have right now our uh, first clinical specialist who is an audiologist and speech language pathologist. Her name is Geetika. She is based in Delhi she, and will be responsible for the north of India and the surrounding region. We do not have an office so as to say in Delhi. Our office is yet based in Bangalore because I don't believe we need uh, to have offices all over the country to be able to provide service and support. From Bangalore, we are able to uh, channel uh, spares, accessories to centers and every center that we work with is equipped with the mapping and troubleshooting equipment and loaner processors and spares to be able to um, give a patient a loaner for a temporary period of time, maybe even a day or two till by the time we are able to ship a processor. So we don't feel the need to have multiple offices at this stage. Uh, I think it's more important to have people on the ground to be able to service centers, which we do. Guarantee is, uh, I presume you mean warranty by this, and this is something which we we fall into line with the cochlear implant industry, which is 10 years on the internal device, and uh, ranging from anywhere from uh, 90 days to three years on the externals, but the most important being the speech processor, which is warranted for three years, and the headpiece again, which is warranted for three years. Consumables such as batteries and cables are warranted for 90 days. Replacement policy, anything within warranty period is obviously replaced free of charge. Anything beyond uh, warranty period needs to be paid for. Uh, this is with regards to the externals. Uh, if there's anything else with regards to replacement policy, uh, did you have anything specific with regards to the internals? Or what about the surgical cost to the patient? Surgical cost? To the patient. Surgical cost, I think, very, it depends on the center because... On replacement, your product goes bad. Mm -hmm. Does the patient have to suffer the surgical cost? No, we are paying for that too. In the rare situations that has happened, we are funding the cost for the patient for the surgery and the hospitalization and the surgeon's cost too. Um, I may have the voice that I've had the occasion to revise quite a few implants done elsewhere where the implant was not properly put. It was in the eustachian tube, it was in the carotid canal, etc. etc. And uh, here too, the companies had replaced the implant. This was a, a nucleus uh, thing present elsewhere and obviously the company is not liable. I think it happened also with uh, Medel that some surgeon had done it where he had not put the implant correctly. So it's not a company failure and yet the company is uh, replaced it uh, free of course. So I think in that we must applaud them that they have been more than cooperative. Uh, now there are questions from Medel which I don't think I can quite agree understand, but I think it's probably what does guarantee mean for 10 years? What about replacement? And do you have a waterproof processor? Okay, we do not have a waterproof processor as such, but we have an activity cover which you can use to avoid sweat and these issues. Shall I repeat it or you've got the answer? I was quite loud. Okay, the, the question answer now is for the, uh, for the waterproof thing. And uh, the other question is warranty. So every internal device, that is the implant which you ins put it inside, will have a warranty for 10 years. So anything happens to it, the company takes over, give you a new implant plus the surgery cost as already mentioned. But if it's an accident or a physical trauma, then that doesn't come into the warranty period. But you are still replaced. Yeah. <laughs> Replace it depending on case to case basis. Plus the external parts, there's a warranty of three years. The warranty does not hold good for the cables. Again, after the warranty, it's the patient's choice whether he would like to have the new part, the new accessory, then there's an exchange price. Or else we repair it and give him the estimate. Is it clear? Yeah, absolutely. I think one more question for you. You said that you have this uh, on the uh, electroacoustic device, you it. What happens if the hearing loss is progressive? Okay, and if the hearing loss is progressive, then there's no problem. While the mapping, you can change the frequency allocation. Because when we map for a duet, we turn off the low frequencies and we give the range for the mid and the high frequencies because low frequency is taken over by the hearing aid. <laughs> So by chance, if it is a progressive hearing loss, if later on the hearing loss increases for a low frequency, is no problem, we can change the frequency allocation. 
Okay, and the same thing applies to a uh, vibrant sound bridge. When you do it, and then the hearing goes down. What happens? To tell you truly, we have a requirement for vibrant sound bridge that the hearing loss has to be stable for two years. Because we can't give much gain through the vibrant sound bridge. We need to have residual hearing in the cochlea because you need to remember that you place it at the long process of the incus. So from there, it uses the cochlea. So you should have residual hearing there to use it. Function called the must. Sorry, I don't know whether this really, I don't think James uh, made this statement, but how does the external device stick on to the scalp if there is no magnet in the internal device? The internal device will always yes, have a magnet. It will always have a magnet. So I think that question maybe the person didn't uh, quite catch it. Okay, now. Which implant could be safely inserted in a child with meningitis? I think any implant could be implanted in a meningitis child unless you have a situation of a ossified cochlea where you have to use a split array. And I think advanced violins is the only one that doesn't have a split array. The remaining three all have a, a split array. Basically, the number of electrodes is divided into two parts and you have a, a V-shaped thing or a Y-shaped thing where half the electrodes are on one half on the other. So you drill the hole into the basal turn, you keep on drilling as much as you can, insert them and drill the hole into the uh, middle turn which is just in front of the stapes foot plate, just below the process of reforms and insert from there. What would happen if the child is implanted and then later on he develops meningitis would the implant be removed? I think it's not for them to answer that, but for me, that if it was a ear infection and the implant got infected and because of that the meningitis occurred, then I think the implant would have to come out because with that infection in the foreign body there, that infection is not going to heal. Because if the implant got infected and then that was responsible, the focus of infection would remain and even if you treated the meningitis, the child would get meningitis again. So in that case, you would have to remove it. Um, I don't think this question I think to you, you know. Why does ABC brochure not distributed in US? Sorry. Why does ABC brochure not distributed in US? One of you has written this. Can you be a little more clear? Right. 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 Us. In fact, please it can't be, it can't be in us. So it is in. <laughs> you, you haven't thought of this. So, right, there's no, no ban on you in the US, right? Ban? No, you're manufacturing in the US. Okay. If we had a ban in the US, we won't be sitting here today. Okay, so I think that question is, we will omit that. Has Harmony cleared all regulatory approvals in US centers for pediatric use? The Harmony processor is approved for pediatric use in, in, in the US and we have patients with the Harmony processor in the US, yes. Okay, then uh, Raki, there is a question for you. You said something about implants having been done in 90 countries. Did you make that statement? 90 countries? Yeah, yeah recipients from across 90 countries. And you said staff in 35 countries. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Somebody was listening. I just wanted to check if you were listening and I think you are good. <laughs> Exactly. There are 1700 employees, out of which 200 are into research and development solely, and there are 90 collaborative research programs going in 35 countries. So it's all about 35, 90. So maybe somebody got it, the message a little confused, but that was my whole thing. And in India, we are five clinical specialists, with all of us being audiologists, and Pika is basically marketing based again in five cities. Right. We, I thought since we are talking about it, I would like to share what is the status in India. Okay, uh, I think a couple of questions for you. Will we be able to update a Baha? You had, you had some uh, model called uh, Divino and then Intenso. So can you update without revision surgery? I think since the picture is in, mm. it should be, it, it's the external. So external should be uh, upgraded, not an issue. Okay, and one more. This I suppose could be to anybody. Due to what reasons the electrodes get short? They don't get short, they get short. <laughs> the, the dealer of the company gets short. 
And one of the <laughs> one of the recipients is sorry, nucleus freedom implant in telemetry had two electrodes short. Is there a possibility of other electrodes being short and what precautions to be taken? Okay. Your uh, anytime with electronics, especially when you look at the electrode array, there are platinum iridium wires, very thin wires and very close to each other and during surgical uh, maneuver, we should remember what is going on surgically. Secondly, uh, we are uh, using electrical stimulation, that means over time we have to look at these electrodes, what is the output. But if at this point the two electrodes are of concern, we will monitor, maybe switching them off at this time because we have 22, we can, the child can still manage, but I would say this child needs to be monitored. But even if you have, and I'll answer it for all of them, at the time of insertion if everything is working okay, as you start mapping etc., you might feel the need to switch them off and believe me that it can happen that okay, you've done the mapping, the child is doing okay, and then over a period of time also a couple of electrodes might, uh, it has happened with uh, implants which were otherwise functioning well. So that has to be kept in mind. Now, these are questions which go to all companies. Uh, for all the companies, what to do when either speech processor stops working or when you are, and any of the electrodes stop working. I think the electrode issue we've talked about. I think the speech processor also, they have said that if it's completely calm, they would replace it under the warranty period. But basically, if something is not working and needs to be repaired, in how much time, I mean, what is your policy? Rachna, let's start with you. Uh, in all our clinics, we have one as a loaner, one or two processors we supply as a loaner. So we, you need not waste your time, just change the processor and you come to know and now you can use this new processor, just download the map, that's it. But still, if you do not have it in your store, we take 24 hours for the courier to reach you. But we always advise you that all the clinics should have at least one or two as loaners for your clinics. Okay. Uh, is it more or less the same for all of you? Because I've got some. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Most of the times we are educating clinicians and parents so that they should be able to troubleshoot themselves. Only when things go beyond their control, that's when they ask for help. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, sure. The thing is, we don't undertake any repairs in India, so you know all processors need so to you come back. No, we, and no, uh, we don't wait for the patient's own processor to come back. The, uh, an immediate replacement comes in from the company within less than a week. But is it a loaner or is it a no, it is a replacement. Which so is any repair required? We just replace it. We replace it completely, and the patient keeps a new one. Now I'm going to ask you like some tricky question. Yeah. Now what happens to the one that's gone? <laughs> that would then, depending on the extent of damage, we don't know. It no, it, it is repairable. Now, if it gets repaired, would you then give it back to the patient and take this one back? No, no, we don't. Then what do you do with that? Then the warranty continues. The patient keeps that new processor. No, no, but the processor that has been taken back. I mean, we have a, we, we need processors all the time in the company for our research, for workshops that we conduct. So it's, in fact, we always need I think what the message of trying to give us, it doesn't happen too often. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, there's one question here for all companies. Um, Bluetooth technology, cell phones, compatibility. Hello, you want to say something? Yeah. You grab the mic from an enemy. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Yeah. Bluetooth technology, cell phone compatibility. Bluetooth technology, cell phone compatibility. Well, you know, the new uh, technology which is coming in now will have the ability to uh, connect, uh, uh, to connect uh, uh, the uh, uh, to stream the sound from the speech processor directly to your mobile phone. This has already come into hearing aids uh, uh, by through Epoch. We all know that, and uh, probably th the same streaming uh, you know, uh, will be possible through the speech processors. Am I right? We have the pulsar implant which has the outside speech processor as Opus 2. It is Bluetooth compatible. No, no, we give a cover. There's a cover which is separately provided and through that you can attach the Bluetooth. It is already available in the Indian market. So Bluetooth is available? Yes, with Opus 2. Yes, and that has to be streamed. To your, uh, to your uh, cell phone. Uh, we have validity study uh, study still going on for Bluetooth usage, but abroad it is available in India. Once the validation is released, I mean, it's okay. proven we should have. 
Bluetooth right now with the FM ear hook with the SmartLink SX. Uh, but like I said, with, with regard to specific as cell phone use, especially when I spoke about our in the ear level microphone, we have patients directly speaking on the phone like all of us because of this ear level microphone. Okay, fine. And uh, completely implantable cochlear implant, I can answer that for you. I think there are trials. It's not available for overall use at the present. It is under trial and uh, it is certainly not out for generalized use. There are certain problems that need to be ironed out. So it's not available to us right now. So we'll keep that aside for the moment. I'm trying to rush to the questions because we don't want to cut into the... Uh, okay. If a child has an implant of one company and now wants an implant on the other side, can another company implant be done? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can go and turn. Yes, uh, yes. In fact, it's very surprising. I was in Delhi yesterday and I had a patient coming to me and asking me the same question. He wanted one of our devices on the other side. I think it's possible. There's nothing preventing this patient from taking our device because finally two is better than one. The information, although different, coming from both the sides, would, it's finally the sound processing that's taking place in a different way would be integrated uh, centrally and patient would benefit. I think it's a counseling issue where the parents need to be informed that then they will have to deal with two companies with two sets of accessories and uh, you know warranty, everything is going to be different. So I think it's more of a logistical issue rather than uh, you know being able to be able to do the device. I don't think that's an issue. I, I, I would put the question to you all a little differently. If a patient has an implant of one company and they come to you saying, now we want an implant on the other side and you know we've read that your implant has these advantages, so now we want to do that. Would you encourage him or would you tell him it's rather that you stick to the same uh, company. What, what you are <laughs> very, calm, very complicating question. <laughs> so, uh, I have something to tell you on that, uh, which I will add on to what our friend said. See, when we, when a certain kind of processing is happening and it is reaching your central uh, system here, and you have another kind of processing coming from the other ears, there is bound, there is possibility, theoretically, of some kind of. Uh, you know, in okay. So, so the ideal thing, although you know, I've done the least number of implants here, and I would be very happy to do the second side. But I think practically correct would be that what with the kind of the same implant company which is got on one side, you should go for the other. That would be ideal. Actually, this question has been uh, lingering around from our clinics quite a bit, and we at, uh, actually found that in abroad there are clinical studies showing that children got one implant in one year and the other continued to perform Different company implant? Yeah okay. Because they, then that answers the next question also that if a child has a straight array in one would you advise a contour in the other? Uh, as long as we know this year is going to give the best performance no, no, What would be the result in a child who is implanted with a straight implant in one year and nucleus freedom in the other? That would be no issue at all Okay, you but you should, you should be worried if you are getting a lot of enquiries because I think they already have a nucleus on one side and now they are wondering whether they should put another company. No, actually, the other way comes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, Problem fine. comes. Uh, if a, a child is using a nucleus freedom implant for the first time, will the outcome of the child be different from the child who was first implanted with a contour device and then upgraded to nucleus freedom? So, with the upgrading, would you expect the same? I would problem? say in quiet seven percent and in noise up to six percent improvement of after upgradation with freedom processor. Okay, okay. <laughs> Anup, for you, when you do say there is no bed drilling, then uh, won't the uh, package uh, displace displacement of the package? No, sir. Because uh, there is a fixation there done by those two screws first of all, and after a little while. I think even that video didn't show it clearly. Uh, the implant has a little flange on which there are two holes and there are screws provided which are self-tapping which you just put and fix. Basically you need to fix an implant. There are people even the other companies where they just uh, drill a well and don't even fix it. They just put it in there and leave it. Uh, or if you have a very tight periosteal pocket, uh, if your part of the well towards the uh, mastoid side is deep enough the implant can't go posteriorly because you haven't elevated the periosteum and the implant can't come anteriorly because the thing is higher. But uh, the fixation is required only for a certain length of time and the implant forms a capsule around itself. But as far as the MXM is concerned, you couldn't show it over there, you have, there are screwdrivers. In the other implants like you saw, we just drilled two holes and we then tied down. And uh, this we 
Hold on. There is one question which is to all companies. Where is that? Uh, there was one red, red one. Oh, that is over. Ah, there was one question which is of vital importance. What are the prices of the various yeah. products? Yes. Please. <laughs> so now we'll start from advanced bionics and go that way. Uh, the price of our system starts off at 6 lakh 10 thousand, goes up to a maximum of 9 lakh 10 thousand. I would just like to elaborate a little on this. First of all, we don't charge extra for a perimodular electrode. As compared to a straight electrode, the price is the same for both the electrode arrays. And right now, for children who opt for our high end processor, which is the 9 lakh 10 thousand processor, if they are below 5 years of age, we are giving them an additional body mode processor kit worth maybe 2 and a half lakhs free of charge. So they end up getting two processor kits for the price of one, which is the first time it's happening in, I think. So let me ask you a very direct question here to all of you. Has it now been conclusively shown that a peri modular array gives a better outcome than the uh, straight array? Not with us. We do not have any data to suggest that peri modular electrodes give better performance overall in terms of results to the patient. We do see certain uh, physio electrophysiological uh, differences in terms of lower impedances and even possibly lower thresholds with the uh, perimodular array, but with our device we have not seen the ultimate outcomes, you still have not in the not our device. Okay. 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 Price, price, not about this question, price. Okay. Um, the straight array, the most commonly one used in India is 5 lakh 12 thousand. Then going to the contour with the sprint or the 3G would be 6 lakhs 98. Uh, the freedom straight is 9 lakh um, 5,000 and the freedom contour advance is 9,48,000. Make a suggestion to you. Tell the company, it's a change cut. 5,12,000 to 5 lakh 12,000 to 5 lakh rounded bana do. No more score. Yeah, but 5 lakh bana do. And then you can compensate by taking the freedom from 948 to 950. <laughs> That's a very good recommendation. Rounded, rounded. Are you listening? <laughs> yeah, why this small change you want to make? Yeah, we are only into premium segment implants, which are approximately nine and a half lakhs each, but we have launched them in India at 6.5 lakhs, you know, so that the patients can get advantage of use of premium implants at a reasonable price. Is your double array available with you? Yes. And what about the price of the split array? Is it the same well, as the split array is the same price as a regular array? Is all companies the same? The split array and the regular is uh, the same price? We have two products for the cochlear implants. The low cost is 5 lakh 35 thousand and the high cost is 8.9 lakhs. Irrespective of which model you take, you get three wearing options. So you can put it either here or at the collar or you can keep the processor here and the battery pack in the pocket. So three options simultaneous. I mean yes. all three are supplied at the right. same time. It's not extra cost. Yes. It's at the same Even time. now as a standard, we are also offering the capo which is the rechargeable BT. So he can decide whether he want a rechargeable BT or a rechargeable board, uh, pocket uh, battery pack. No, either or or both. Or, or it is or for the capo and recharge. There are two rechargeables available. Yeah, One is the BT I think uh, James wants to say something. Yeah? He got a little worried, I think. <laughs> <laughs> just like to correct that, um, we are offering the capo rechargeable BT. And we don't offer the uh, uh, that um, the body one rechargeable. Um, if you would like to have the, the body one rechargeable, then they have to pay for it. Yeah, that's what she said. She, she said that. Only for the capo, you have to pay extra if you want both options. Yes. But otherwise, the three options of here, collar, or this thing is all, all in one. Okay. And uh, I think before we close, I would like to thank all of you. I think we've had a, a very healthy discussion. There has been no problem at all. Your question will have to come later because uh, now the cadaver dissection will get uh, <coughs> delayed. They are all going to be there for the cadaver dissection. Uh, somebody will be there because they are supplying the dummies uh, for the implant. And uh, a very big thank you. And a big hand to you. I think it's been conducted. It's a really a good spirit. Most of you have got the information that you want. If you still have any doubts and were too shy to ask, you can still get hold of them and quietly ask them about whatever. <laughs> and uh, audience, thank you. I think we had a lot of questions. Some questions left unanswered because we have to stop now that the cadaver dissection won't get into a problem. Because what happens is they're also will close at a particular time. We've called extra staff and uh, they also want to go home by a certain time. So we promised them that we'll release them by a certain time. If not, I'll have to pay them overtime for one more day. 
So before we now uh, go to the next batch A, come with me, I'll escort you to uh, JM. So just assemble outside, collect your certificates, feedback forms, and batch B, have your lunch fast and, and come there. The amount of electrical current which is delivered to the 